When it comes to the question of medics primaries, I don't think there's any other weapon slot where there's one so dominant weapon that everyone just expects you to be using it at all times. I need Here you go. <laughs> now, there's definitely no arguing that, yes, it is the best in slot for general use for a medic. Not only does it amplify your rate of healing, but you can also just shoot a medium to large health pack at anyone further away in need of medical attention. But allow me to just for a moment put your attention on these. I know you've seen them before, you may be thinking you know exactly where I'm going with this, but bear with me a little bit. Today, not only am I going to give you a real reason to actually use the syringe guns, but I'm also going to teach you a thing or two about how to use them. So put on your surgical mask and get ready to take some samples, because today, you're gonna become a syringe gun expert. <music> to talk about each of the syringe guns and what different uses they have. But before that, let me just shine some light on in general why you would use them. In most pub matches, you are most likely the only medic in your team. That means you might be the only passive player in the team. Now what the hell do I mean by that? It means you're the only player who can look away from the battlefield, yet still accomplish your job. You are most likely to be the player who spots a flanker first, and in most cases, be the first player who gets to experience what that flanker was trying to accomplish. Now let me ask you, in this situation what would you choose? A good healing tool for your unattentive team that might do say, 40 damage before you die? Or a survivability option that might let you escape? Or if you learn how to aim it properly, might even kill him? So in essence, the reason to use the syringe guns is when you can't trust your team. In pubs, communication is rare if not non-existent, and a syringe gun in your hand could be the difference between your next uber or dying at 84%. Also, if you do happen to have another medic on your team who is using the crossbow, then you have even more of a reason to equip something else. Since at that point, your team's healing rate is more than enough. You could even take the role of a defensive medic, as you let the guy with the big healing play more actively, since he's going to need to pay closer attention to his team with his crossbow. Well, you don't even have that worry since, well you don't even have it equipped. On a side note, I noticed when using any of the syringe guns that people would get so overconfident that they could hardly ever lose to a syringe gun fight that they move very predictably. So given you know how to use your weapon, some interactions are surprisingly easy. Hi, editing Kosh here. One thing I thought of now that I hadn't put in the script is that the syringe guns are objectively better at spy checking for invisible spies. Alright, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Continue. So that's a general overview as to why you would opt out of the crossbow. Now let me dig a bit deeper into each one, since I believe that all syringe guns have their own respective place for slightly varying playstyles. Yes, even the stock syringe gun. If you want to hear more about playstyles and why that's important, then might I suggest you check out this video after you're done watching this one. It goes a bit further into how weapons change the way you play. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> Minus 15% damage penalty, movement speed increases with percentage of uber charge. Believe it or not, this weapon was, by the community at large, considered worse than the stock syringe gun for the majority of its lifetime. It wasn't until 5 years after its rebalance that people started turning around on this weapon en masse, thanks to a YouTuber finally putting this weapon in the spotlight. The overdose is a good survivability choice. It's basically just the escape plan for medic, so it's the one I have the least to say in it thing about. Movement speed is one of the best buffs in the game, since TF2 was completely designed around movement. It's also the easiest primary to use, I'd say even easier than the crossbow. Since to get the buff, all you need to do is use your medigun. You could never fire a shot with it and still get all the benefits from it. All in all, not bad for a syringe gun, but I still think it's not the best one. Plus 3 health on hit, less passive health regen. What used to be Medic's most popular syringe gun has definitely seen less and less use, though if I were to guess, it's because the overdose gained more popularity. 
I'm still of the opinion that the Blutsager is the much better option, but I can understand why the overdose has taken over, since getting the benefit from the Blutsager actually requires you to hit your shots. That being said, let me give my reasoning why I think the Blutsager is better. Unlike the overdose, which only gives you a chance to escape, the Blutsager gives you two options, flight or fight. Coming across someone who actually knows how to use this weapon can be downright terrifying, since as long as the medic is hitting his shots you might as well assume that he's always at full health. Now let's look at the alternative option, flight. Say you have a chance to escape, but you've already been hit. Nothing is stopping your enemy from chasing you down, but this weapon still gives you two more last resorts. Either send a bunch of syringes his way and hope you get enough health to survive the next shot and escape, or what I enjoy the most with this weapon, the bait and switch. I think the best way I can describe it is like this. I am a medic. Healing my friends is what I do. Alas, my friend, he got hit by two. In a field of body parts, covered in red stands the demo man, the reason why he's dead. I scream in fear, I am a sitting duck. The demo man laughs, and they can't believe his luck. A defenseless medic, all oh, this is good, for I am close to a kill streak of divine godlihood. He jumps forward, I am in for a whack, but he does not know he didn't see through my act. While the demo man is airborne, I reverse my shoes, running back at him, Blutsager, to make the move. The demo falls down, needles sticking out. I walk up close, looking down, with no shout. As I stand with no scratch, I look him in the eye. One more syringe, and I knew he would die. I am a medic, healing my friends is what I do. But healing is not as rewarding as getting to kill you. Ah! Hmm. Yes, believe it or not, I do think that this weapon has its place. And no, I do not mean as a learning tool telling you not to use it. Right, where do I begin? Uh... Well, since the overdose is the fleeing option, and the Blutsager is the one who does both fleeing and fighting, you'd expect this to be the fighting one. To that I say... kinda? The actual damage isn't better than any other syringe gun, and the Blutsager is way better at combat. But a place where I do find the syringe gun works is the fake new player. You see snipers do it all the time, they remove their cosmetics, in hopes that the enemy underestimates them and move predictably. And if they're lucky, they might even get some accusations. Well, that's not just true for sniper, in fact it works with every class. Picture this, you're a soldier, you just flanked. You see a medic with no cosmetics, he spots you and whips out his syringe gun, so you plan to jump at him, to kill him and jump away. Oops, he knew how to aim the syringe gun, and now you're standing with less than half your health between a medic and a heavy that has turned around to see why his medic stopped healing him. If that medic would have been using the blood sauger or overdose, you might have assumed he knew how to use those since he's clearly opted out of the crossbow. And you might have chosen to be at a little safer distance, but the syringe gun is, well, stock. Every new player who plays Medic is going to have that equipped. Alright, well that's at least my attempt at giving the stock syringe gun a place of its own. Now I want to talk about the main part of this video. How to use the syringe guns, and actually hit your shots. I don't think there's any hiding that using the syringe gun is rather tricky, but I do have some tricks to using it. I'll go through them one by one since then I can make a funny abbreviation. Alright, I want you to remember, aim into the future, select advantageous fights, switch to aggressive, circular volley using corners and doors, and my patient is missing his shots. Right then, 
What do I mean by aiming in the future? In short, the projectile speed of the syringes are so bad that you basically have to predict the future. And that's not impossible. A large part of getting good at TF2 in general is knowing what your opponent is thinking and hiding what you yourself are thinking. For example, if a soldier keeps bombing you every single time he sees you, that quickly becomes very easy to predict. Whereas if he were to do it only sometimes, it'd be harder to predict. So aiming in the future is not so much about aim, but more about what you think said person is going to do in a few seconds time. Okay, let me give a more clear and controlled example. Using this scout. Now, say I've... Say I've been in this server for a few minutes, and I've come across him a few times. Already here, I have to make a decision whether to aim left or aim right. If I've noticed the scout is a newer player, he's probably going to jump right, since new players might not know that you can switch direction when double jumping, or just haven't gotten the hang of scout's complex movement yet. Whereas an experienced scout is most definitely going to jump left, he has already jumped right once, so switching direction is usually the best move, since he's probably dodging my team's shots as well as mine. But little does he know that I know that he doesn't know that I know what he is about to do, since I've been paying attention to him for the last few minutes. That's what I mean by aiming in the future. It's less about aim and more about knowing the player. <laughs> Select advantageous fights. This has a lot to do with how often you should be whipping out your syringe gun, because in some games you'll be up against more experienced and less predictable teams, and sometimes you'll be up against very predictable teams. The point I'm trying to make is to make a mental note of what the other team is doing. Test them out in some 1v1s and observe what they're doing. For example, if they often split off and you encounter more 1v1s, then you can probably use your syringe gun more often. But if you're up against a team that is always close together, it's going to be a lot harder because the syringe guns are best used when you're punishing a risky play. Someone trying to back cap, someone trying to snipe a sentry in an open area. Another thing I should throw into this segment is that the Solemn Vow is more powerful than you think. The ability to see enemy's health could grant you plenty of kills that you otherwise wouldn't have gone for. I know giving up the uber saw is hard, but I think if you're religiously clinging to one weapon, it's about time you tried a different one. Switch to aggressive. This was pretty much summarized by my little blue tog opponent, but I'll go a bit more in depth here. In essence, you trick your opponent into chasing you, by which point you attack them, making it easier for you to close the gap to do more damage while also throwing off your opponent. This is a trick that pretty much every class uses, mostly scouts, demonites, heavies and spies, who want to be as up close as possible. The infamous corner stab? It's the exact same thing. The reason why I think this works for medics is not because you want to close the gap to do more damage or anything, it's the second part, throwing off your enemies. It works because when you're retreating as a medic with his syringe gun out, a weapon known to be a last resort, the last thing you'd expect him to do is switch direction, and by the time you understand what he did, you're already dead. This is something that I started doing recently, and I must say I'm actually surprised at how well it works for medic. But given that you have teammates behind you, it's best to let them do the job for you after you baited your enemy into them. This strategy should be reserved for when you're alone. The circular volley. This is an aiming technique that I actually came up with myself that can be pretty useful if you're just starting out how to learn to aim. It's best used when you're being chased and intending to actually retreat, not to go berserk on them like I talked about previously. Especially in open areas where you can't take advantage of doors, corners and the usual lack of mobility that an indoor setting has. It's very simple, just move your mouse in a circular pattern in the direction of the enemy. The idea behind it is a bit of an accuracy by volume kind of deal. What you're essentially doing by moving in a circular pattern instead of trying to aim perfectly is that you're guaranteeing that at least some of your shots hit. See, if you haven't gotten the hang of aiming the syringe gun yet, or just can't be bothered, and you try to aim perfectly, you might miss your first shot, which means you'll miss your second, third, fourth, until you readjust. Aiming in a circle gives you a much higher chance of hitting, letting you find that spot where you're consistently hitting your syringes. Using corners and doors to your advantage in a fight is way more important than you think it is. 
This is not a straight cut as switching to aggressive where nearly all classes use it for a similar reason. No, this has to do with an attribute of the syringe guns themselves. Given that you move in a certain way, you can hit people from behind walls, where they cannot hit you. Many say that the slow projectile speed of the syringe gun is a massive detriment and makes them the worst weapons in the game. I say they just fail to see what a slow projectile speed can give you. So, how do you do it? Find a doorway or corner. Backpedal around it while you're shooting, aiming at the apex of the corner. Because of the slow projectile, the syringe you fired will still be airborne by the time you've turned. So if someone wants to chase you, they'd be in for a barrage of syringes first before they can even have a chance at scoring some damage on you. This is probably the absolute best scenario for all syringe guns if you're going for a kill. So I emphasize it again, if you're running a syringe gun, then running for cover is the best offensive option. My patient is missing his shots. When you're playing casual, you'll be playing with all sorts of players, and sometimes they aren't the most reliable. This can sometimes call for the need for you to take part in the fight. But instead of putting you in the shoes of a medic, allow me instead to describe the perspective of the patient. It'll be more relatable, I feel. We've all been in that situation, in a 1v1, where we get the enemy down to the health bar of a century-old elder, only to completely miss every shot that would have finished him off. It happens more often than any of us would like to admit, and having a medic sure could help us survive, but he can't help us aim, that's for sure. But what if he did? See, being a healer doesn't mean you can't help the team in other ways. You don't have to equip the syringe gun for selfish reasons. At times, some syringes might be just the thing that your patient needs. So what can we take away from all of this information? That this whole video is a massive stretch and you should probably use the crossbow for any and all medical needs, okay, but- No. Do you want to Get fucked. Did you want to fuck? We're still okay. Do you want to fuck? Get fucked. Holy sh- no. What did I- <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm lagging really bad. My pain yeah, just. Face, 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 face. Oh my god, oh, let's go, dude. What <laughs> oh, was that? Holy. The scout in front. Get him over it. Get absolutely <laughs> fucking destroyed.